Hello, Wooten students. My name is Josh Friedman, and on today's COVID CareVid, I'm going to be interviewing Mrs. Stepling, one of our AP U.S. history teachers. Mrs. Stepling, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Definitely. So to start off, what hobbies have kept you busy over quarantine? Um, during quarantine, I have been, uh, I've been running, uh, trying to run every day, uh, just for a little bit to get out of the house. Um, I've been playing with my dog. Maybe you can hear her chewing a bone in the audio. Um, and I have been, uh, I've just been like, uh, playing with my kids and hanging out and just trying to get outside a little bit. That sounds like fun. Are there any activities that you recommend students do over remote learning? Um, I would encourage students to get outside um, and have fun um, to uh, maybe take some time uh, to go to one of the Montgomery County parks and take a hike or um, there's some crazy trails um, over by me, but also over by you guys too, that you guys have access to. So um, just kind of explore what's out there um, and see, uh, see, see what your county offers you uh, that you can do for, for basics for free, essentially, yeah. Now, how, if at all, have lessons adapted to be more suitable for virtual learning? Um, so what we've been doing is we've been doing a little bit of direct instruction, either at the beginning of the class period or at the end of the class period, which is basically me as a teacher feeding my children the information, my students the information, um, and either checking answers or uh, prompting them with questions to get them engaged in the content of the day or the content of the week. And then um, for either the other half of class, I try to do something more student-centered, something that they can discover, something that they can have choice over in their learning. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and so we, we have adapted it, but it's really, it's the same questions. It's the same content. We just have to deliver it. Uh, in a, in a more uh, compact, direct way. Um, the, the, the like natural organic feel of a classroom where I would ask questions and that, that would get us to where we need to be, um, it, that's a little bit harder on Zoom, but I think, I, think, I think I'm figuring it out. I keep telling Ms. Bolden I'm finding my flow and I think I'm, I've almost found my flow. If I can master Nearpod, then I will, then I'll feel good about myself. <laughs> and how has your experience as a history teacher shaped your perception of the major events that have taken place in 2020 thus far? Yeah, so, oh boy, 2020 is quite a year that we are going to be teaching for another, yeah, so I'm, yeah, 2020 is a big one. Um, so we think of 2020 and when we were in the spring of 2020, I was talking to my students and I was feeling a lot of 1968 um, and a lot of echoes from 1968 with civil rights and war, no pandemics, um, but definitely with current events and social and political um, feelings and attitudes. We saw a lot of echoes of that in the spring uh, and continuing into the fall of leading up to the election in November. Um, for pandemics, uh, so obviously we're gonna use that word unprecedented, right? Because the last time we had a pandemic, it was the Spanish influenza in 1914 or in the 19 teens, if I'm getting my dates wrong, but right after World War I, 1918, never mind, 1918. Um, but it, nobody in my generation has any concept of living in your house and not uh, seeing people. So this is definitely um, the pandemic aspect of 2020 is something that we're learning about and we're, you're actually watching society 
figure it out and then adjust and then figure it out and adjust and figure it out and adjust. And having the patience for, for a large population to, um, to cooperate with one another, um, not a hundred percent cooperation, but to, to, to learn the new normal or to learn how to keep one another safe in a way that we've never thought about necessarily, or maybe we have thought about, we haven't put it into action. Um, that's kind of where, that's kind of the take I'm, or the observation I'm making for 2020, I guess, <laughs> with the pandemic. Yeah, sorry. So what do you expect of students as they take a history course virtually this year? What do I expect of students? So I expect them to, uh, the number one thing I've found for success is communication. Um, communication and inquiry and asking questions. Um, students, I think in all courses, um, have to, um, have to have to reach out um, if they're struggling, um, and I hope the students come with the knowledge. And if they don't come with the knowledge, here's the knowledge that um, we're all learning how to do this style together. And so coming to your teachers and saying or saying that the, that you don't understand something is what's expected to happen. So there is no. There's no punitive action if you if you get lost or if you can't find an assignment or if you didn't understand the, the directions um, because we have we're all trying to learn this new platform we're all trying to ask questions um, either whether it's on Nearpod or Pear Deck or you have all these different apps that we're learning how to use as well so you know just engage with your teacher get to know your teacher uh, your teachers want to get to know you too and um, the, the more you work to get, we work together, the better it's going to be. And what are some resources students can take advantage of if they need extra help, but cannot attend office hours or feel like they need more help than office hours can provide? Okay. So if they need more help than office hours can provide, you can always meet one-on-one -on -one with your teacher. Uh, I have to, you can do that during uh, the focused student support periods from 2.45 to 3.15 on Mondays and Tuesdays, or not Tuesdays, sorry, Mondays and Thursdays. Um, but if you want to have like a peer tutor or something, reach out to NHS uh, on the Wooten NHS website or even on the Wooten website, if you go to NHS, you can find it. Um, and also, um, I know Mr. Steinbach runs homework club uh, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays after school. And that's a great place to go and just sit and do your homework or sit and study with, um, with peers, with other high school students who have taken the courses and can help guide you through some of the assignments. Um, and those are great resources that we have at Wooten um, for students that need some extra help or they just, it's just nice to work with people um, if, if anybody's, Mrs. Cresham and I work together on all of our teacher trainings and, <laughs> and a lot of our outside uh, teacher assignments that we have to do. And it's just nice to work with somebody on an assignment uh, to bounce ideas off of and be like, is this what they're talking about? Is this what they're asking for? Um, it just, it makes that, it makes that risk that you're taking by learning a new subject a little bit easier if you are working with somebody to I definitely agree. And last but not least, do you have any advice for students during these unprecedented times? Uh, so I say, so this is unprecedented and this is crazy. Um, but this is, uh, like I think I said earlier, we, if we work together, we are, we'll be successful in, um, in whatever we put our minds to. And so making time for yourself to go outside, to move your body, um, to, doesn't have to be whole sweaty exercise, but to just do a, a 20, 30 minute walk is so mind clearing. Um, I would want, I want you guys to, to take a break from your screens and just go. 
somewhere where there's not a screen. Um, and then you can come back to your screens, but I really, I really, I really encourage students to just walk away from their screens for, for a couple of hours and then come back and do any work or anything that they need to get done. Um, yeah, and just get outside. So as we're adopting the, the phrase that there's no bad weather and just bad clothes. So I'll be outside <laughs> as long as I can take it until my fingers fall off. So I think that's, yeah, I hope it helps. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for your time and for being a part of COVID CareVids. Yeah, thanks for having me.